man hunt. Mace, the Dark Age. Eternal Champions, the Dark Moon. And of course, Mortal Kombat. <clears throat> what do all these games have in common? Well, they all were controversial games in their own way, perhaps, but they all stemmed, started from the first Mortal Kombat. Now, there are other games that came out that were bloody and gory, and a few of them, like Way of the Warrior on 3DO, uh, that's an example, uh, but I can't, you know, I'm not going to go and show all these games. I would take a while. The point of this video is, controversial games like this gather crowds, gather news headlines. They gathered attention. And by today's standards, for the most part, honestly tame. That is until Thrill Kill came along. Thrill Kill was a game that never got released to the public, uh, at least normally. And as you can see here, it's definitely a bloody game. There goes someone's head. What the kill had. I'm going to pause it right here as the executioner goes in for the final thrill. Was it was a four four player four character fighting game set in an arena? where the object was simply to build up your thrill meter, kill meter, whatever you want to call it, and finish off the other three opponents. The creators behind this had certainly a lot of ambition. Um, and lots of balls to bring out a game that had not only gore, but sexual undertones and stuff like that. And it was definitely a game in, I believe, 98 that would have um, made a lot of few eyebrows had it caught, got published and actually came out. I played it. Played it for a little while. Um... But ultimately, it became boring um, because unlike Mortal Kombat, it, it was janky. The controls were off. It kind of reminded me of Power Stone a little bit on the Dreamcast, where it was basically like a run around, beat people up type of thing, which is fine. But the controls were very off. And... Uh, all the fun was really sucked out of that. Now, even in 98, there were far better graphical games than this to come out. Obviously, this game wasn't polished or finished off. I mean, when it technically got leaked uh, and some people got it, were fortunate enough to play it, you could tell that it wasn't totally finished. The version I got didn't have the endings programmed in there. Now, on YouTube, you can actually find them. You can watch them. Um, I haven't myself because, you know, I don't really care. But out of all these controversial games, this was not my favorite. Manhunt was my favorite. Now, the thing about Manhunt, yes, you went around and 
did your business. But what I liked was it was sort of like a under music going on, the, the creepy music. The graphics are okay, but the whole point of the game is not to be seen, to sneak around. And me, I'm a sucker for stealth games. Now, yes, Manhunt and Manhunt 2 were controversial for their glorified violence, however you call it. Nowadays, it would be looked at as like, whatever, honestly. Um, I'm talking about why I liked it, and it wasn't necessarily the violent factor. The difficulty in it was there. Uh, I wouldn't go so far to say it was a Dark Souls game. But you had to go through areas and not be seen. Because if you get to fight with any of these enemies, you, it would be very bad. Because you, your health bar would just go down really quick. Now, unfortunately, this is like a dark version of the gameplay. Let me see if I can find it. But anyway, the whole point is you had to stay in the dark. Now, if you were caught or you made noise, your character would blink. And as you can see on the bottom right there, you're blinking so they know where you are. And then each scene you would do, you would get a score. And at the beginning of each scene, you would have sort of video that played out like a found footage type of deal. The story itself is like you would find in some cheap horror film. You're an you're escaped convict that's put to death, and a snuff director has decided to put your the character into this survival area where each area he has to go through it and kill who he can get weapons and all that stuff to make it to the next scene and so on and so forth and while he's doing it he videotapes you doing all these heinous acts not the best plot certainly not the most well acted although um brian cox does the voice of the main villain which was cool i bet none of you some of you may have not known that um he is from x-men 2 fame if that helps uh, so um what uh I did like about the game was the stealth mechanic, which was really cool. You gotta plan your form of attack. Like there, you just distract a guard doing something. You can make sounds to distract guards. And Hunt 2 took this to the next level. Environmental kills, where you would use environments like a electrical box or something like that if the bad guy was close enough and you would do your thing now man on two i played through that wasn't as good as the first one it had moments sure um the added uh, environmental situations were there and stuff like that um i i don't think it was as hard as the first one I mean, it's challenging, yes, but not as hard as the first one. The story in it, I found weird. Um, now, I only play this once, but it's basically you play a, a mental case and you're being narrated out of here. Now, like Manhunt 1, you can distract and stuff like that, but I found Manhunt 1... Uh, much better in execution and it's not really a pun <laughs> as far as fighting games go uh, Mortal Kombat clones I thought internal champions was the best 
Um, it used kind of a Street Fighter cartoony look to it. The fighting was a little bit to get used to, but um, it did have, especially if we got the Sega CD version, um, The Dark Moon, if I remember the title correctly. Um, it had, each character had, I believe, two finishers. Um, most backgrounds had a finisher, one or two finishers, actually, which was really cool. And um, they had a, a, what's called an overkill, which was like this cinematic doom that befell the loser. Um, plus they had, I recall, cinematic um, endings. So it had some really cool stuff. Now, I don't think there were too many copies that were made or... Uh, it was very limited to get hands-on because Sega CD, I believe this came out at the point where Sega CD kind of was dying out. And um, I think they finished the game. Now, you'd have to all this, look this up to confirm, but I think from what I remember, they um, did release it, but it, um, there wasn't a lot of copies that were released. Because like I said, Sega CD's lifespan was ending. Uh, around that point. It's too bad because it would have been really cool to... Uh, I would have loved to have owned this game. I did play it. Um, of course, that'd be only emulators for me, but still, it would have been cool to actually own the game. Um, I wish they would actually remake this game, but in the cartoon style you see here. Um... I've been wanting that for a long time, so that way I can play it myself. I don't call if they made a 3D version of Eternal Champions. I don't think they did. But this would be one series that I wish would come back. Um, I just love the characters, the design, the concept. It is the best Mortal Kombat clone fighting game that ever came out. The others had moments but weren't coming close to it this had its own themes its own story backgrounds and it had a lot of cool characters like xavier i used him quite a bit actually um, i think most people did um, this background fatality is really cool and what i liked about the background fatalities is that you had to hit them in a certain spot for it to take effect like this one you had to um we go back a little bit. So if you hit him in the center, or I think it was either side, left or right, you hit him, they would go onto this stake here and the demise would happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I like the fact that the background fatalities were specific, not just you uppercut them and that's it. Or... Uh, you had to put input something. Um, some background backgrounds had two stage fatalities, if I recall. Um, off the top of my head, uh, I think I can only think of one, which was the I think the Atlantis looking background with the water. But I could be wrong. It's been a long time since I played this. But this was the best Mortal Kombat clone game. Okay. War Gods was supposedly going to be the next Mortal Kombat at the time. It came out on, well, I played it on um, Nintendo 64. I could not. I, I did buy it, but I think I bought it used um but its controls were horrible for one and uh the backgrounds were meh at best i like the theme of it um but the backgrounds you you can see especially with this one where they're it's limited um so it had your typical uppercut blood stuff, but it, it just 
didn't do anything for me. I think this is probably one of the worst uh, Mortal Kombat clone games that I played myself. Uh, Mace the Dark Age. It was alright. Um, janky controls. I did like how some of the backgrounds had kind of like danger areas, like the electrified water to in the fight and um, I think the each one had a finisher one each um, so it was okay um, it, it's definitely a acquired taste of a game I did like the characters and stuff and the sort of ideas they had for it I actually did play as the executioner quite a bit over anyone else uh, but I did like the um, uh, that one character. I can't even think of his name yet. I like the two swords. But yeah, that, that was the other guy I played. Rashish, I think his name was. But yeah, Mace was okay. So yeah, I uh, just wanted to make a video on kind of like the controversial games and blip games and stuff like that from my past. Uh, obviously, the original Mortal Kombat 1, that I think is still one of the best out of the, the first three, honestly, um, just for look and sound and stuff. I mean, Mortal Kombat 2 is really good, but I think this first game they did was for a really classic it had the classic look the classic feel i love the announcer's voice like the voice is really yeah see i love the announcer's voice in there it felt raw and just there and as you know the Johnny Cage was supposed to be like a Van Damme and he kind of ran with his character and Mortal Kombat came out but uh, each character had their one fatality and of course you had the pit, pit stage fatality and then the Reptile was the hidden character and all that fun stuff um, so these first three games in the series, um, the digital series, were well known for their difficulty. So they got harder and harder with each iteration, especially MK3. I remember being quite a, the computer white cheese. Um, and then, of course, the Mortal Kombat 4 was the start into the 3D era. So, yeah, um, those are some games that I talked about. I didn't go too much into Thrill Kill because the graphics even turned me off from watching, uh, looking at the gameplay. Um, I did play all of them. I did own all of them at one point, uh, except for Eternal Champions. And that is the one game that I wish they would bring back from the dead. I mean, Sega, Sega's brought games out, but I wish they would bring that one back that, and keep the cartoon look. And uh, I can imagine what they could do with it at this point. So, yeah, uh, that is my critique, I guess, on controversial games.